Thank you for watching the PowerMation YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we're clear. Great job, Terry. Thanks for hanging in there today. Remember, video topic next week is data collection from the factory floor. Well, you're welcome. Yes, data collection. You know, that part I've never solved is getting data directly from the sensors. Well, you're the expert. I think you'll figure something out. Well, you're right. I am the expert. <clears throat> data collection from the controller has been pretty straightforward in the past, but how do you get it directly from the sensors? Now that's the challenge. That's a good point, but hey, it's been a long day. Take the week to think about it. This is amazing. How can this be? Am I... Am I... No, Terry, you're not. My name is Sean. I have something interesting you should see. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Sean Foley. I'm a business development manager at Banner Engineering. And uh, I'm involved a lot with SnapSignal technology. Uh, it's a new portfolio of products. I'm going to be talking with you, Terry, uh, explaining to you a little bit about it. Uh, it's really great to be here. Sounds great. Tell me more. Yeah. Uh, so a little bit about SnapSignal technology. So what is it? So at a high level, SnapSignal is a portfolio of IoT enabling hardware and software that enables people to make better data-driven decisions. Hmm. So IoT has been a buzzword that's been going around for a long time. People are looking to deploy it more and more. And it's been exponential in terms of uh, how it's grown over the last few years. It's going to continue to grow. But we've had a lot of conversations with customers who want to deploy IoT, particularly on their legacy machines and legacy equipment, but they don't know where to start. They don't know, they, they perceive it to be a massive enterprise-wide consulting yeah. engagement or a lengthy, uh, a lot of time to install it. And so I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, what SnapSignal is. It's a portfolio of hardware and software, um, but to explain really SnapSignal, it really helps to talk about the SnapSignal data elevator. And so it's really powerful about SnapSignal technology. I'm going to talk a little bit about this with some hardware, is that it's an overlay architecture. So what do I mean by that? So a lot of machines throughout the world have all sorts of different sensor signals on them. They may have a discrete light, for example. They may have an analog sensor, maybe detecting tank level. Um, they may have an IO link sensor, one of the many IO mm -hmm. link sensors deployed globally. They may have a current transformer. So what's a current transformer? A current transformer, you could clasp it around a, a conductor going into a motor or a cable going into a motor and continuously monitor the current of that motor. And why would somebody want to monitor that? Well, if they notice fluctuations in that current and it seems out of whack, that could be indicative that a motor is mm -hmm. about to fail, for example. Discrete sensors, just a simple on and off. They may have a serial, like a temp and humidity sensor. They want to monitor the temperature and humidity of their environment or something like a QM30 that Banner has, where it's monitoring the vibration and temperature of a motor, for example, mm -hmm. that's mounted. Um, so they have all these different sensor signals. What Snap Signal is all about is, is being able to capture that sensor data, convert it all over to a unified serial protocol with our compact converters, most of which, they're about the size of a AA battery, and converting that over to a unified serial protocol. And so that unified serial protocol has a lot of advantages we could talk about. Um, but once it's all converted, talking the same language, we're able to take it into our what's called our DXM R90 industrial controller. And what our D I like to think of this product as the consolidator, You're gathering mm -hmm. all these sensor signals with actionable data, um, having it talk in the same language, bringing it into this consolidation product. And from this product, you're able to send from this controller, you could send that data out to the world. You could send that data to your, your SCADA, for example, or an mm -hmm. HMI. You could also send that data directly to the cloud. So HTTP push methods, or via MQTT, you could send it to AWS IoT Core, for example. So what if we had a whole bunch of sensors in the field and they're all connected together with cords? 
You have to splice every one of those wires is what you're telling me? Yeah, so in a lot of cases, if a sensor is already installed, so it's, it's the, the beautiful thing is that we're, this is an overlay, so we're not gonna mm -hmm. be disturbing their existing controls in nearly all the instances of snap signal. So typically what we're gonna be able to do if they have a sensor installed that they wanna tap into, mm -hmm. that may be already communicating with their control system, you could use something as simple as a parallel wired splitter like this. Plug it into your, your sensor, maybe it's a discrete sensor counting objects mm -hmm. moving by. Plug it into your sensor, the sensor goes here, one branch of your parallel wired splitter goes back to your PLC, your existing control system, so it's not disturbing that in any way. Mm -hmm. But on this other branch, we're able to take that signal, that discrete signal, for example, or maybe a zero to 10 volt, convert it over to a unified serial protocol with this compact converter about the size of a AA battery, and we're able to send that data to the controller. And so this controller product, it's, this is, as you can see, it's pretty small if you wanna, wanna hold that there. It's a 90 millimeter housing, it's called our DXMR90 mm. industrial controller. Yeah, that is small. So it fits in about the palm of your hand. And what, what's really powerful about converting these signals over to a unified serial, serial protocol is that RS45 protocol, you could have multiple devices connected on a single branch of this DXMR90 industrial controller. So if you look on this, this animation here, so if you wanted to have, say, TN multiple sensors and have multiple sensors going back to a single port on the DXMR90 industrial controller, you could do that. And another benefit of the, the RS45 protocol is you could have a very long cable length. Mm. And so we're seeing a, a, a ton of interest with this technology in being able to have legacy equipment, maybe installed for, for decades, and being able to access sensor data that's already there, unlock sensor data that's already there, we could also add new sensors. So you could add, maybe if you wanted to monitor motors, or maybe you wanted to monitor tap into a discrete sensor that there, it's, it's really offers the flexibility to, with this overlay technology, to add new sensors, to get better mm -hmm. insights in the health of your machines, but also tap into sensor signals that's already there, in a lot of cases, just by using something as simple as a parallel wired splitter, an M12 splitter. Um, so it's very powerful. And then another thing is we have a new IOLink master as well. So being able to take in IO link signals, you know, IO link has just been exploding over the last several years. And there's so many different IO link sensors out there. Yep. And we could pull in all of that data into this overlay without disturbing their existing control system. Interesting. I always always knew you could grab data out of a controller and that part of it, getting it out of the sensor has always been a challenge. Splicing into wires, cutting wires, duplicating sensors, and you've solved all that. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of a lot of success with it. And then the, there's another element to this as well. So we have our controller, we have our converters, and the thing that we like to emphasize is we have convert we have over 30 different varieties of these converters. So for example, and then for the, another thing that's really exciting is that it's talking about being a, a conduit for all the different sensor signals that you may mm -hmm. have, a lot of these converters are brand agnostic. So you could use banner sensors, although you know we always like people using banner sensors, you can take in other sensor signals. So for example, we have a converter that could take in a four to 20 milliamp signal from any sensor, whether it's a pressure mm -hmm. sensor from another manufacturer or a temperature sensor, and we could convert that four to 20 milliamp signal or zero to 10 volt signal over to RS-485. And so the fact that it's brand agnostic, you could take in other sensor signals is really powerful. And we have converters for things like current transformers, for things like thermistor signals for monitoring temperature, um, for things like even say an analog signal, maybe you have a tank level application mm. and you have a four to 20 milliamp signal coming out of that, that tank. Uh, you're just monitoring the fluctuating level you could convert that signal and have all these sensor signals essentially talking the same language before being brought up to this consolidator product. And you could have dozens, well over 100 sensors mm -hmm. connected to a single DXMR90 in a lot of cases. So a great way to take in a lot of data as well. I like the way you can parallel that to an existing system. So if you've got an OEM machine that's locked in, you can't tap into it because they're not allowing you to, yep. you just parallel this system, collect the data, push it to the cloud, and now you're not obstructing the machine as it's running. It's an isolated little island of data collection. That's exactly. Cool. That's a That's great way cool. to put it. In a lot of cases, end users, they may not even be able to dive into the code. 
yeah. to, to go into the PLC. So this is all running in parallel, so mm -hmm. you're able to add it. Another thing that I think is really exciting is bringing in the data, all the sensor data, um, is one thing. Being able to send that data where you want it to go and in parallel to their existing mm -hmm. controls or their PLC, so you could send it to the cloud. But what if you wanted to say, another thing that I think is really quite exciting is the ability to offer local machine indication, so a visual factory element. A lot of people know Banner does a lot with lighting products. Mm -hmm. So this is our WLS 15 light. So here's an example of that highlights how you could take it, capture sensor data. Here we have a, a Q4X that has a four to 20 milliamp output, so it's a laser distance sensor with a four to 20 milliamp output. What we're able to do is we're able to take this sensor, convert it over to a unified serial protocol with a compact, these are called our S15C converters, so it's a 15 millimeter mm -hmm. diameter. And then from there, we're able to take that data into the DXMR90 industrial controller. Another, another area that we have on this is our temp and humidity sensor here. So maybe you want to monitor the humidity or temperature of an environment, maybe it's in a, in a plastic hopper. Mm -hmm. And if there's high humidity, uh, the plastic starts to stick together and it clogs up your machine. That's so something you want to monitor and have that data continuously being monitored throughout the day, throughout the year, throughout the month, and you want to continuously track that. That's another thing. Um, but so we have all this sensor sig data being brought into the DXMR90 industrial controller. And this industrial controller is a decode and ethernet port to send the data out to the world, to the cloud, for example, or to a SCADA or HMI. Mm -hmm. um, we have a WLS15 light here as well that's being essentially controlled in this kind of island in parallel. So this is not being controlled by a PLC, but we're also able to offer a local indication element to this mm. display as well. So maybe there's a machine out there that um, they have an analog sensor signal, they want to add an analog sensor signal, but they also want to, to alert personnel, maybe my raw material is falling below an established yep. threshold. So I can get send the data to the cloud so I could get a text message or an email alert when the, the raw material is falling below a certain mm. threshold. But I also want to alert personnel with a visual element. Uh, mount one of these guys on a tank, or maybe next to a roll diameter as, as roll diameter is fluctuating. Yep. You could offer a local indication element as well as a cloud IAOT solution for tracking raw material, for example. And you could do it with a lot of different sensor types. Um, another, another sensor we have is, um, a device we have is some of our IO Link Masters, like this one yep. right here, as you can see, is a two-port IO Link Master. Hmm. Uh, so for taking in IO Link sensors, the many thousands of IO Link sensors deployed throughout the world into this overlay um, architecture. So you could harvest sensor data that's already there, or you could add new sensors to fit the application. And um, you know, I get questions all the time: of what what sensors do I need to, to yeah. tap into? What sensors do I maybe need to add? And sometimes with questions like that, I may have a, maybe a machine that's been running for 20 years, it's working quite well, mm -hmm. but it could be working even better. And how do we get it working more efficiently yep. is, is by able to add some technology and it doesn't have to be even be a, a very large, massive solution. It could just be starting to add a few sensors to their machines to help cut down on things like perhaps downtime, perhaps things like improving the overall efficiency of the machine by continuously monitoring certain assets. Um, one question I like to ask customers is, or end users is, what, is your pain, what are some pain points you experience with your machine? And how do you, what assets, if they were to fail, would be catastrophic to your production? And, and how do you monitor those assets? Do you monitor with a, clip, a notepad or a clip mm -hmm. pad going, going up and down, monitoring the gauges and, and yep. writing them into a, a notepad every, every month or every six months? Or do you continuously monitor those assets with, a, with an IIoT solution where if, say, a, a sensor value falls below a certain threshold, you could automatically get a, an email alert, for example, or a text message alert. So it's a very um, flexible, scalable solution. And I think the nice thing is, too, in a lot of cases, it's brand agnostic. Very impressive. Yeah. Well, thanks, Sean. It's been great to talk to you. And thanks for welcoming me to Banner. And thanks to our viewers at the Parmesan YouTube channel. Have a great day and be sure to like and subscribe. Ah, oh, dang it. It was only a dream. And that's the solution I've been waiting for. No, Terry, it's not a dream. It's SnapSignal from Banner Engineering. And it's available now.